How can we become an adventurer? That's what we're going to find out today. Live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, and drink the wild air. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Well, I don't live near the sea, but I have lakes, and I love to drink the wild air. All right, so we're going to finish our conversation about the book, How to Be a Scout, Do Your Best, by Bear Grylls. I love the topic, and I really like the book. It reminded me of all the good times I had with my troop, being a Girl Scout, and all the great lessons I learned, and what a stabilizing effect it was on me. I think it empowered me to understand that I am learning to take care of myself, and I will get there to this place where I will be able to take care of myself. It put me near solid families and gave me a troop that we could depend on each other, trust each other, and be friends from different walks of life. These weren't just the people in my neighborhood. These were people on the Air Force Base I was growing up on. So it meant a lot to me. Made a huge improvement in my life, too. Now, there's parts of this book I'm not going to talk about because it talks a lot about camping and hiking and tools and techniques. But we're going to talk about the parts of the book that can be brought out to use in your day-to-day lives, how to make your life better. Maybe someday I'll do those other pieces on the Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak podcast, but not this one. So we talked about last time how it's important to stay positive, to have grit, and negativity only brings everyone down. This time we're going to talk a little bit more about leadership and some other resources we can use that will help us to be a better adventurer. He says the first thing that we have to do whenever we're encountering trouble, see, we already walked into trouble, is to stop, which is an acronym. We're going to keep our minds from racing out of control, letting our fear get the best of us, and we're going to start to take action. So he says it's important that we never panic when we're in trouble. It never helps anything. So instead, he says the STOP acronym will help us resist that panic. S stands for stop. There you go. T stands for take a moment. Breathe, relax, get your mind to calm down a little bit. O is observe. Look what's going on around you. See what's happening. Maybe you can get protection instead of running or whatever it is that's happening. Or even in your work life, maybe something catastrophic happened to your organization. Take a look around and see if you can observe what is actually happening. And then the P stands for plan. You want to come up with something you can do to get out of whatever situation you're in right now. This is going to help you in every situation. He says that even if you were to encounter a fire or again, like I said, your business is having some sort of struggle, something on a massive scale went wrong. These are things that you can do. Give you an example, and this is going to be a hiking example, is my friend and I went hiking in this very bluffy area. It's known, somewhat famous for its Mississippi bluffs. And you go down into this ravine. We got down to the very bottom. It's beautiful down there. There's caves and there's pools of water. It's beautiful. And then suddenly we hear the rumble of thunder. Now the internet is not great here and neither of us had any bars. So first reaction is run. Let's run. Well, I'm not the kind of shape that can run very fast. And I'm pretty short, so my little leggies didn't go very fast. So we get up to this part where we encounter a three-way direction. I don't have a map with me, not very adventurous, and we didn't know which way to go, and the thunder was getting closer and closer. We stopped panicking for a moment and thought about what could we do, and then remembered, while we don't have internet, we still have phone, and that was working fine. So we called the front desk of the state park and she said, make sure you go right and not left. And that got us out to the parking lot, back to the cars much sooner. But by thinking and not panicking, we were able to get out of the situation before the thunderstorm came. It's a perfect example of not panicking and not just running for the sake of running. Resourcefulness is always going to get you out of a situation better than panic. Now, the next part he talks about, and this is going to be a little woodsy, is your acronym for survival in order. P-R-W-F. Protection, rescue, water, and food. So if you ever find yourself in really a dire situation, that's the order you want to go in 
in order to get help, to do something positive for the situation you're in. But we're going to talk about real life circumstances here in a minute. So the first thing is always protection. You can only stay out in the elements for a very short period of time. If you're cold, if you're wet, or it's blistering hot outside, look around, see if you can get some protection. Next thing is, look to see if you can get rescued. Do you have your cell phone? Do you have a way that you can call for help? There's more options than ever. And then comes food and water. Make sure that you can get the things you need to live. The general idea, they say, is that you can live without protection for three hours. You can live without water for three days. And you can live without food for three weeks. So it's important that you prioritize what's going on. Now, you might think, great information. It's good to know what you need to do if something catastrophic happens. And again, he says, maybe your house is on fire, something like that. Those are the suggestions you want to get. If your house is on fire, protection. Then get help. Then think about food and water. But even think about it again. If your work is having a particularly bad situation going wrong, you could also say the first idea is let's protect from what's happening. If the company software has caused a massive problem, how can we stop that problem from growing bigger? Then the next part is, can we ask for help? Can we get rescued? They might be people from inside your organization, or it might be someone outside your organization. But this is the idea is that you want to stop the damage, then you want to go for help, and then you want to keep yourself strong. That's going to be the food and water. Make sure that if you're having some kind of crisis in life, some kind of crisis in work, that you keep yourself fed, rested, and properly watered. See how I turned that whole thing around to work? But he says it's important to know priorities of crisis situations so you know how not to panic and how to do something properly. He suggests, too, keeping a diary. This is not when you're in a crisis situation, but keep a diary of your adventures, of the things that you're going to do, even if you're driving to a new town. It's going to help you remember what you saw, Maybe if you're out there seeing wildlife or nature, you can write down the flowers or pictures or something like that. But having a journal will help you become an adventurer because it will reinforce your positivity about having adventures. And then it'll remind you of the good times you had when you're not on an adventure. He says the next thing is, is that you have to dream big, but start small. Of course, I'm going to love that advice, which means You want big goals out there. You want to know that you can do the hard things in life. But by taking small steps and starting small and creating plans, looking at what it is you're going to do and break it into smaller chunks, suddenly your big dreams become achievable. The next piece of advice is something I recommend. Have a shakeout run or test. It's when you get a piece of new equipment, something you haven't tried before, and you're going to go try it out, see if it works. And try it out when you're closer, you haven't started something big. This is applicable in real life too. If you just bought something new, try it out someplace where it's not going to have big damage. If you just got a new computer, test it out. Make sure it's working properly before you depend everything on it. Or if you're working on a new plan from work, is there a small way that you can take and do a shakeout of it to make sure it's working as you intended. The plan is successful and worthwhile. My friend and I went out last week on our shakeout bird watching. It is starting to get to be March. Spring is here, and we were going to go on a test run. And you know what? Everything failed. The cameras failed. The binoculars failed. The car packing system failed. All right, next time we're going to do better. But now we know because of our shakeout run exactly what it is we need to do. Then the next step, he says, is to make sure you get some skills. It may be that if you have some skills already, you just need to take some additional lessons to get better at what you're trying to do or get some practice in. Or if you're trying something entirely new, take a class. Go find a place that you can go figure out what adventures, what big dreams you're going to have, and then learn whatever it is you're planning on doing properly. He says the next part is to bring a friend. Having someone to do projects, adventures with is going to be more fun. It's going to be safer because you have two people to think and collaborate with. And sometimes it's just important to have another set of eyes. Always having an adventure with another person along makes it a lot more safe, a 
lot more fun, too. He says it's important that we learn from our failures, whether we're having outside adventures or inside problems we're trying to solve. If you have a setback, if you went the wrong way, things didn't go as you entirely planned, it is as important that when you have successes, you'll learn a little bit more about it. It may show you something important that you didn't know before that you know now, and you'll be able to do better the next time. The only wasted mistake or wasted bad experience or failure is when you don't learn a lesson from it. So being an adventurer is about learning from your adventures. And he says that once you start learning more, seeing new things you've never seen before, having new adventures, maybe you're going to write a book. And he says he can't wait to read it. So the very last part of the book, he talks about that you can do a lot more than you think you can. I mean, that's the biggest thing. That's the lesson I wish everyone knew. That things are within your grasp. It might take some learning. It may take some stretching. But you can get to a lot of different things. When people talk about having big dreams and trusting in themselves that they can do more, make sure that it's just realistic. There are things that we obviously can't do. I cannot be an NBA player. There's many reasons for that. That doesn't mean that I can't have my dreams in other ways or have dreams around those types of dreams. So he said the first thing you want to do is make sure that you get the skills and the learning behind your big dreams, that you realize that you can do it, and not to let people stop you from doing those things. If they don't feel confident about it, if they don't think that it's something you should be doing, I do believe it's important to listen to other people's lessons or opinions about those things. Maybe they have a good point. Maybe they'll give you a point that will make you more successful, or maybe they'll point out a danger you're not thinking about. But he says you have to act on your dreams and not to listen to the dream stealers. Again, I'm a little bit on the, hmm, maybe you should listen a little bit to the dream stealers and then strain it out and take what's good out of it and leave what's stealing your dreams behind, unless you shouldn't have those dreams. So my advice in that sense is be practical. Make sure you do enough research and you know what you're getting involved in. But in the end, still shoot high and realize it's going to be fine. Because if you shoot high and it didn't quite work out, you're going to learn something. You're going to know something about yourself and you're going to know something about the dream you pick. And again, the only bad thing is if you don't learn from it and you don't prepare better and you don't take the lesson of the bad thing. If you just quit from whatever it is you're doing because something went wrong, that's a loss. If you ignore the lesson of what went wrong, that's also a loss. But when you take those lessons, incorporate them into your next try, that's where it's going to be important. And then he says, too, you have to get out of your comfort zone. This is the most important thing, I think, of everything he says. It is so easy to get stuck on that stupid couch. Whatever your dreams are, the couch, whether it's real or metaphorical, is the worst thing in everybody's life. Mine too. I love my couch. But it is hard to get momentum to start doing the important things you wanted to do, to get the goals you wanted to get. You get stuck in a rut. You get stuck where you are. You're just like, oh, it's just good enough. I'm going to play video games. I'm going to read a book, watch my favorite movie. I made popcorn and everything. And then you're in your comfort zone. To break out of that comfort zone, you will have to go in and stretch. He says that's where you're going to enter in what he calls the fear zone. That's going to make you a little bit nervous. Maybe you're going to get a little anxious. He says maybe your pulse is going to go up. But you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to take that step, whatever it is. He says talking to a grumpy friend or doing something that was a challenge to you. Once you start doing the hard things and the important things, you're going to start to learn more and more about yourself and you will go out there and do them more often and better the next time. So go be adventurous, get into that fear zone. I think for me, that's the biggest lesson of all is that I just couldn't get myself out of the couch. It wasn't that I was destroying my life. It wasn't like I was going in the wrong direction. I was just in stall mode all the time. And you know what? Everything happened good in my life when I got out of the stall mode. Started to get into the fear zone. I got a job that was better than the job I had, primarily because I was in the fear zone because I couldn't afford the house I bought. Then I got a better job and I suddenly could afford 
reasonably well the house I was in, house I am in today. And instead of there just playing games, watching movies, and getting into that rut, every time you get out and into that fear zone, it makes your life valuable, worthwhile, and you'll never want to go back. In fact, I'm having a hard time going back to that zone. I'm always working on something. I'm always plotting something and working on some kind of project. Because you know what? Every time I get those little successes and make those little wins, I make my life a little bit better. It's thrilling, more thrilling than anything else I've done in my life. So make sure you overcome that and then learn to overcome your stress. And then you'll be able to manage it and not get into the fear zone, but then go into what he calls the growth mindset. So he has a chart in his book. And he says that, you know, the comfort zone, which we just talked about, is where you feel safe. It's where the couch is. It's very comfortable. The fear zone, again, is where you're nervous and you lack a little bit of confidence. After you get out of that fear zone, you're going to be in the learning zone. You will know how to deal with bigger problems, bigger fears. You will know how to take things on without stress better than you were able to do before and be able to go out and do big things. You'll set new goals. You have bigger dreams. And then at that point, you're going to go into the growth zone, which is when you're going to start really growing your life, having those adventures and getting the things that you were always hoping to get. And if you want to hear more about it, that was episode 47 of this podcast, talking about getting into your genius zone. Guess that goes out of the big leap. And doing all of that and going through that effort, you're going to be an adventurer. You're going to be the person who gets your big dreams and moves forward in your life. That's going to be the most important thing. And he says in the end, you have to be you. That's the most important thing. So I'm going to give you part of a poem that he wrote, not the whole poem, because I'm a terrible poem reader and the poem's kind of long. But what he says is, tomorrow's a place no one's been. Your future is the only place you can go. True enough. The future is all we have. So let's make that future full of challenges, adventures, and big dreams. Go see the world. Go have new skills. Go learn new things. Maybe go back to school. Sometimes it's going to be an outdoor adventure. That's my thing. And sometimes it's going to be something that you've always wanted to do. He also says it's important that we start using positive words. When we frame things with positive words, not only does it have a positive effect on us, but also it's going to have a positive effect on the people around us. Whenever we talk down about something, whenever we are alarmists, whenever we say negative things, it can drag everybody down, including you. And so if you're getting stuck in a rut and you say things like, I don't want a resume, I don't want to talk to people, I don't want to have any change in my life because of X, Y, and Z, see right there, all negative. Instead, you use a positive language of, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready to take on new challenges. I'm ready for my life to move forward. Talk to yourself about it. Talk to other people about it and bring them to a level where they're excited to have that adventure with you. And he says, always when you're talking to yourself or other people, have a call to action. Challenge yourself or challenge other people. There's so many dreams that we can get and so many journeys we can go on. And in the end, that's the spirit of scouting. And that's where I think that this book explains that power that it'll give us the ability to reach big, be thankful for the things we have. He also wants to include our precious planet and the people around us. So I know some of us weren't in Scouts, currently are not in Scouts because we're probably aged out of it, but keep thinking about life as an adventure and using the skills that Scouting gives to everybody. Start taking on those challenges. If it's something like a new job or traveling to the other side of the world or doing something you're very scared to do, We all have those things, and we can, with some of these tools and skills, start going after them. So my challenge to you is think about something you've always wanted to do. Is there a way you can turn it into a venture? If it's mundane, it feels a little scary, feels like it's in the fear zone, and maybe you're a little bit nervous about it, is there a way you can make it more like an exciting adventure? I'm going to learn new skills. I'm going to grow. I'm going to knock this out of the park and change my life. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I hope this inspired you too to listen to Buzz Blossom and Squeak podcast. New nature podcast about getting out there, 
and enjoying nature, understanding it a little bit better. Also, there's a better life in smallsteps.com. It's a blog and it is the home to everything my friend M and I do. And remember, our walk through every adventure in life starts with small steps. <laughs>